Badger and the Badger. Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here and it is time for another champion build video today. We will be taking a look at Brand in his alternate position as support brand. Now, I've talked about this a little bit and I know, I think even Riot talked about this a little bit, um, about support brand being maybe an off meta pick for uh, support players. And the big reason why I wanna look at this now is because of the current state of League, which is very tanky. And because of his passive, I think he can deal a significant amount of damage being a support on your team. And he's just different and fun to play down there. So we're gonna take a look at that today. We're in a little early fight. Um, goes good early, I guess you could say, when he gets this kill. Um, we unfortunately try to re-engage for, uh, I don't know why, but we both died to Callista, which is really unfortunate, to be honest. But, um, it's gonna happen, I guess. Anyway, so for this build, let's kick things off by talking about runes and masteries. So for runes, two choices with your marks, either magic penetration or hybrid penetration. Hybrid pen's good because as a support, you get gold when you standard attack the enemy, when you have your mastery set up that way. Also, it just lets you deal a tiny bit extra damage. And the hybrid pens are actually very, very good cost-effective runes. Um, then for the seals, health or armor, that's a choice that is made upon many things to consider. Armor's gonna be helpful against the AEC. Health is just a good base stat to have. And then when it comes to the seals, magic resist, um, are gonna probably help you out the most there. Flat magic resist, it helps you out more early on so you don't die, which we did, which is hilarious. We're not worried about really scaling our magic resist. We're gonna be a squishy support regardless um, because that's just how we are. And then for our quintessences, we're gonna take a uh, flat ability power. So we get 15 there. So that's what we're taking. And then as for the, um, or for the runes, and then for masteries, um, we have the page down in the bottom right. Check that out if you'd want, pause the video. Other than that, let's move on to Brand's ability so we know what's going on as the game continues. Starting things off with his passive, Blaze. Brand spells lights his target ablaze, dealing 2% of their maximum health in magic damage over four seconds. So this, the, the concept, the theory behind this now is because we have these very tanky jung or very tanky junglers. We have very tanky top laners. Because of this, we've seen a little bit, I don't wanna say tanks in mid lane, but we've seen people building more health on mid laners, so they survive a little bit longer because of consistent damage. Uh, Blaze passively now is just gonna really help you deal extra damage through these longer extended tanky team fights. That's the concept at least. So to start things off at level one, you're gonna put a point into your W ability. This is your pillar of Flame. After a short delay, a big pillar, you know, out of the ground, bursts, magic damage, hooray. Um, all units hit by it will um, take an additional 25% damage um, if they are ablaze. So um, remember that. And then at level two, we're gonna put a point into Seer. This is your Q ability. We are going to max this out second. We max out our other ability first. But Seer, when you launch this ball of fire towards the enemy, we'll hit him and deal magic damage. Um, to the first enemy that it hits. If the target is ablaze, the target will be stunned for two seconds. So um, the one thing about Brand is you gotta make sure you land another ability before you throw your Seer at them to get the stun proc. Here we'll do it real quick by using our E ability, which we'll talk about next, and then throwing Seer at them. But let's talk about that E ability. This is in your conflagration. I feel tongue-tied saying that word, don't know why. Um, we're gonna put a point to this at level three. We're gonna max this out last. Um, when you use this on a target, you will deal magic damage to them. If the target is ablaze, it will then jump to nearby enemies as well and set them ablaze. So it kind of does like a popcorn effect. You'll see it happen on minion waves or on enemies if you hit a bunch with it. So that's what that does. We max that out last, like I said. And then you have your pyroclasm, which is your ultimate Points in that 6, 11, and 16. Brand unleashes a devastating turret of fire that bounces between enemies, dealing magic damage each time it bounces. If a target is ablaze, then the next bounce will prioritize champions. It will bounce up to four times um, for a total of five hits and can be hit the same and and can hit the same enemy up to three times. So down in the bot lane, this actually works fairly well since there's another two people to typically throw it at. Now, when you play mid brand, um, Pyroclasm usually is gonna hit them, try to bounce off of minions and maybe hit them again. But you can usually bounce this between the support and the ADC and hit them back and forth to get them just to take the damage instead of random minions in between. So um, that's the nice thing too about having him down in the bottom lane. So those are your abilities, W, Q, E, and of course that R. 
that's what those are. Now, early on in the game, when it comes to the items uh, in the start of the game, you're going to start with the Frost Fang. It's going to give you that mana regen, and it's going to give you ability power and hooray. Frost Fang. Um, getting a quick fight. Lee Sin comes in on to me to kick the Lucian. We pick up the kill though on him. We stunned him up instantly. We toss the alt in. It bounces around on people. Dealing, you know, taking damage is what we want. It's really good. But we built that Frost Fang early on in the game. Very good um, item to have. Obviously, while we are in lane, just just remember that. Or no, Frost Fang's not the first. Is whatever the first part of the Frost Fang is. We we do have the Frost Fang currently. Frost something. It's frost something. I'm close enough. Anyways, we obviously will be picking up a somewhat early sight stone. We have done so. Health is going to be good on that. Obviously, we want the ward charges. We need to make sure we don't skip this item. If you're going to play a damage bottom laner for a support, still have to get the sight stone because you still need to ward. Can't emphasize that enough when I see people skip that for some weird reason. Um, then when it comes to the next parts of our early damage and just items, because... We could get more supporty, but what we want is actually more damage because we're a damage support uh, in this case with Brand. So we're going to transition into taking our early boots and turning those into sorcerer's shoes so we have magic penetration to help deal with all that magic damage that we can do. And we'll also pick up an early haunting guise because haunting guise does synergize fairly well on Brand and it kind of doubles up when we turn it into the Leandri's Torment later on and get extra damage from it. So we'll have the Haunting Guys right now, you know, 25 ability power, we get more health, and we get more magic penetration. So luckily right now we have a good amount of magic penetration. Um, Brand's base stats are, they're fine. They're not outrageously amazing. They're not terrible either. So um, as much as we won't be building like upwards of a thousand ability power to deal more damage on our spells. We'll have a good amount of penetration to make sure what does hit them does deal significant damage. And like I said, that constant ticking from them getting tankier and building more health will actually net you a lot of kills. We have four right now. When we get into team fights, we do want to try to peel for whoever we can by obviously getting somebody ablaze and then hitting them with Seer to stop them in their tracks. But we want to also make sure that we are dealing significant damage. And luckily, since Brand has really long range, you can do this. It's very effective. So we have finished off that guy's Into the Leandri's Torment just to go over to the Torment and why we get this. We do get that 50 AP. We get a little bit more health on top of it too. And then we have its passive. We're dealing spell damage burns an enemy for 6% of their current health as magic damage over 3 seconds, dealing 1% of their current health as magic damage every 0.5 seconds. If their movement speed is impaired, so if you do hit them with Seared and they are stunned up, they take double damage from the effect. So if they are impaired at the time, they'll take even more damage. So we're stacking all types of health damaging effects on top of people, which is just absolutely great. It's a double whammy with the passive and the Lee Andres, which is why we've picked it up. Also the little bit of health we get from that and Ruby um, Sightstone. Well, we don't have Ruby yet, but just Sightstone. Just a little bit of health. It is going to help us out a little bit. And we're going to chase down the enemy support and kill him. Bye, Nautilus. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. So that's what we do with our early items. So kind of your early core, um, you're going to have the Frost Fang. We'll build it into a Queen's Claim eventually. That comes down to a little bit of personal preference on how fast you want to build it. The nice thing is when we do build it into the Frost Queen's Claim, um, we will be able to get a little bit of a cooldown reduction which is good, we will take that, and a little bit more ability power, and we'll be able to use the active on it. Just the commitment to actually buy it, you know, the next two parts of the item is about 1,300 gold-ish, roughly. Am I doing math well? Let me think, yeah, roughly-ish, 1,200, 1,300 gold to finish it from the state of at least just a frost thing. So um, we will be picking that up, which we have at this point in the game after we finished, you know, having the Sidestone, having the Leandries, having our boots. Make sure you swap out your totem for your sweeper. You want to make sure you pick that up. Very important to do. And then keep contributing to damage. So we really focus on that. Now, things to be careful with about Brand. We've talked about how this little bit of health on him is important, but you still need to be aware. Brand is a very, very squishy champion. He will die very, very fast. It's just in his nature. He was one of the first... And I say this now thinking, he was one of the first extreme long range nukers when he was released. I remember when Brand was released and you would just take pillars that felt like they were so far away they shouldn't hit you. But he was one of the first to sit back and launch really, really powerful spells from really far away. That's just how Brand was at the time. So 
Um, we haven't seen him as much now because of his lack of mobility, and there's other champions that deal lots of damage too, so he's kind of fallen off a bit. Still really fun to play though, but he's very squishy. As you will see, they really want to tower dive me. Luckily, I will pick up a kill on the uh, Callista as they dive me, and the uh, Nautilus has to flash out to make sure he doesn't die as well because we're doing some significant damage. It is very good. So we built those items up. That is where things are at at the current moment of the game. Now the next item I'm pursuing in the build will also be granting me a little bit of cooldown reduction, which is good. And this is another item that is going to help us, I don't want to say necessarily help us with our passive and with Leandries, but is kind of on the same premise of, of help. What we're building next is going to be the Morella Namicon, which we've now finished off. Now Namicon, as we know, helps us with, you know, that's CDR. It helps us with some pretty good ability power uh, damage for at a pretty cheap price. Um, that is the nice thing about Namicon. The other thing too is it's going to prevent that healing on them too with the passive or the, you know, yeah, I said that right. So, very helpful. The Namicon is a good choice against these tankier teams with more uh, regening health. This brand support against like a Mundo top would be actually kind of like really unfortunate for Mundo because he's going to build a lot of health. He's going to have a lot of regen, and the brand support will literally just be knocking him off from doing anything with his ultimate. So, something to consider. Maybe if you're looking for something. So, that is, uh, that is the next part that we have picked up. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Um, other than that, brand. Just, uh, really the main thing is, protect when you can, and then the biggest thing I think when you're playing him, because, because we're playing him for a lot of passive damage, honestly, um, is to just make sure you get your alt off in a really meaningful way. When it comes to final items, I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of leeway when it comes to a final item. I think you probably have, off the top of my head, five good choices, and here are they. So, more slows, more health. Rylize isn't terrible, helps with Leandries as well. The other good one would be of the death cap. Just ramp up your damage and just contribute a lot more damage to fights. It's not a bad idea. It's going to help really quite a lot, actually. Um, void Staff or Hourglass. Hourglass, I don't know. It's. I mean, it protects you in case you're just becoming a uh, an outed target if they have like a Zed on their team and he just really wants to pick you off. He'll be able to do it really easily. Hourglass is going to help you dodge the dot damage and just a lot coming in from like a Zed or just from a lot of them in case they're really divey. Void Staff, if you need to cut through a team that's really just all about prioritizing magic resist, that would also come into effect. The other item that would... All, well, actually, there's like two other items that would come into effect too. Twin Shadows can be helpful. More ability power. You'd be completely maxed out on cool reduction too by this point. You get some movement speed and you'd have the unique active adding a little bit more crowd control to Brand's kit since he really only has the one thing. The Twin Shadows would be a good choice. The other option would be to pick up a Chalice of Harmony and then build it into the Mikhails to save your ADC. Another fantastic option and you'll always have... Um, plenty of mana regen. Everything about the build, though, is in the description. If you have any comments, let me know down below in the comment section. But other than that, I'll see all of you in the next build video.